Hi guys, it's Bisu from Bisu Boutique. So glad you stopped by today to see us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the video. And then if you click on that bell icon, YouTube will notify you whenever new videos come out. So it's a cool thing to do. Hope you will do that. But anyway, today what we're doing is we're gonna take a necklace blank, a raw brass one from bisuboutiques.com, and we're gonna hit it with a micro torch to create a little bit of torch patina on it. You may have seen me do this before. Then we're gonna take it and we're gonna give it a good whack with our texture hammer to create a little bit of depth and dimension in the brass instead of it just being flat. And after that, we're gonna heat it again and we're gonna use a little bit of swellicant darkening patina on top of it to get it to get real rich and dark and really cool looking. You'll see if you come on over here with me and I'll show you how. Hey guys, so here we are. I'm going to show you how to make this from this. This is a very um, popular necklace blank that's made in raw brass. It's American made and we've carried it at bisuboutiques.com since the very beginning. And there's so many things you can do with it. A lot of times we've been doing assemblage on it. But I'm going to show you how I can just take the bare blank and make it look like this from this and then after you have that nice blank you could possibly make something like this very cool necklace so that'd be fun I wear this a lot actually I have earrings to go with it as well so the same technique that we do on the crescent you can do on the earring medallions the blanks which we do carry those at Visa Boutiques too. The um, item number for the crescent blank, this, is base 02847. We got lots of them. I always have lots of them because we, you know, we sell a lot of them. People like them for all kinds of different things. And then this earring part, the circle, is base 04142. The only difference is, is it doesn't have the hole at the bottom, but you can do that with your hole punch. And if you've forgotten how, just scroll back in my videos because you'll find the video there that will show you how to use a hole punch very effectively. So let's get started. Without further ado, as they say. Let me put this <laughs> aside. And I'm going to just sit this here so you can see how this transforms. Now, I like to build my uh, torching set up a little bit higher for myself so I actually have another one here. And I always take um, two cookie sheets big ones put underneath this, the, the soldering block and also one at the back so it would catch maybe any stray you know little sparks that would come out so just use reasonable safety and you will be fine with this this is what I use I use a little blazer spitfire torch I have a video on that too if you want to scroll back you'll see all about it I firmly believe that blazer is the best kind to get for the money. It may cost a little bit more than the cheap kind of X brand ones, but it's worth it. And I have quite a few of these here. Some of them the company even gifted me. So um, you'll spend maybe $45, $50 for this. That's worth it. Then you have to get a, a, a can of fuel, which goes right in here to load it. If you go back to that video, you'll see how. And then you get a full of um, the fuel and away you go. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to torch this first. I'm going to pull down on this. Whoops. Always point it down. Sorry, guys. And then I have a little thing on here where I can lock it. And then I'm just going to start. See, that's another reason why it's good to have that uh, cookie sheet at the back because in case you forget and you don't have it pointed down enough, it'll catch it. Yeah, to be honest with you, they call these torches creme brulee torches. Some people do. And that's because uh, they use them in restaurants to light your food on fire. So anyway, so now I'm going to shut this off right here. And I have some pretty good patina going on there. All I did was just kind of romance it a little bit with the heat. You can solder with these two, but I don't know. Some people say maybe a little bit more power. This one's pretty light pretty much lightweight okay so now this one it's warm it's nice and warm 
so when I don't, <laughs> no, get something to pick it up. Normally I have a, a pair of copper tongs, but I can't find them for the life of me. So now I'm going to put on here, and I'm going to have to, I hope I can get this going good, because Javi's got um, her set up so that you can see me right there. So now I've got it on my steel bench block, which is, you have to have it. You can't just put this down on wood and start whacking on it, and you don't want to leave it on your soldering block, because you'll smash it to smithereens. So now here's what I do. I take it while it's warm, and I'll kind of lay, lay my pliers that I used as the tongs down on it to hold it in place. And I'll just give it heck, <laughs> trying to get it nice and even. And this is a texture hammer. I forgot to show you. See, I've got kind of a waffle texture there. I've kind of got lines on this one. They, there are a bunch of them out there. We used to carry one that had interchangeable heads. They're easy enough to get hold of. I just haven't been carrying them because it seemed like people didn't really want to buy them from me. But the, you know, you got to have these. I really think you got to have these. And I like this waffle type one best. So I'm getting it nice and even. Sorry about the banging, guys. But there's no other way to do this. Okay, I've got it fairly even. Now there's a funny thing about when you bang metal. It cools it down for some reason. I don't know what the reason is for that. You scientific types can explain that if you like. But anyway, it's good to go. So, I got it pretty even. I could have probably had a little bit more in there. In fact, I think I'll do it. But it's good to do it when it's hot because when the metal is hot, it just, it's, it's softer. You know, it'll take the texture hammer better. So, okay, I'm, I'm looking pretty good on that. So now I need to heat this up again. There are a couple ways I could do that. I could put it back under the torch, but a super easy way to do that would be just to use, in fact, I don't even have to put it on the soldering block. I just use my heat tool. Whoops. This is how I do, I raise patina on all kinds of stuff. Now, you got to be careful with this, too, because it's, it's, it's pretty hot. In fact, I have actually raised some patina on brass with this thing because it's that hot. But it's not like the torch. You really want to use the torch. So this is good and hot now. Very good. Shut it off. All right. Another reason you want to do this on here because we're going to make a bit of a mess. We're going to use. I should. I should have put this in a little cup. But this time I'm just going to use it out of the bottle. I've got a nice flat swab there, and I'm going to go ahead while that's really good and hot, and I'm going to lay that right on there. And as you can see, in some areas it starts taking like immediately. And wherever it doesn't, I'll just heat it again. I would not advise that you put this stuff on there and then stick it back up under your torch. I don't think it's a very good idea. Don't do that, please. But, um, oh, I got a kitty down here. She's supposed to be she upstairs. Was She's a bad Sorry, girl. Javi's going to take her away. Okay, you can see how nice and black that got. This is what's great about swelling and darkening patina. It's like instant satisfaction. Just heat it up. And it'll it'll work for you right away. It doesn't have to bloom like the other patinas that they're that are they have in the line. But this one's right away quick. And it doesn't stink like liver sulfur. And it works like super good on brass, which liver sulfur can kind of be a little resistant. You know, you can you can get nice um, patina with liver sulfur, but it stinks and takes more time. So now I'm gonna heat this again a little bit. Just to make sure I got it nice and even in there. So you can see it's kind of starting to dry it. And this is going to make it really good and black, I'll tell you what. Okay, now we got that going on. Now, very carefully, because this is hot, I'm going to take, and I'm going to take this piece of nice uh, paper towel, and I'm just going to dab at it to get that X swell again off of there. Now, don't touch it with your finger, because it will still be quite hot. All right? Now, you'll see back here that I have a nice bowl full of uh, cold water. I'm going to throw that in there. That, they call that quenching it. It just cools it down quick so you don't have to wait around for it to cool down. So now I'm pulling that back out. You should really, if you're soldering, you should really always have a few bottles of water in one of those bowls around anyway because that's just safety. Now I'm drying it off. Good safety. Have your water handy in a bowl. So I'm now just wiping this off. 
and you're probably not going to want to leave it like this because it's just it's not pretty like you, you really can't see the detail but you will in just a minute i'm just trying to dry it up okay i'll put it there all righty so now i got this fine steel wool i'm always preaching the merits of this fine steel wool zero 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 four quadruple ought four steel wool you get it at the hardware store and i'm just going to start oh, wow. buffing it back huh. it's as simple as that I was like, it's really dark. I can't see it. I know. It's like, who wants it like that, right? Yeah. That doesn't look like the original. It looks really nice now. Yeah, it's coming around. We may have to do it again, though, because it's not even. Let me see. Maybe a little bit more scrubbing back. We'll get it nice and even. Yeah, I'm missing yeah. a little bit of blackness right here. So that's easily taken care of. I'm going to heat it again. That should be enough. And then I'll get my swab back out. And you don't really want to be dipping your swab back in. You'll pollute it a little bit. But because I forgot to bring a little cup over for it, I'm going to go ahead and risk it. You're worth it. You're worth a bottle of darkening solution. Although I think it'll be okay. I'm not doing it that much. Okay. So I think... I should take care. I see a couple places here. I could have got a little bit more texture hammer, but you know, that thing, that's just the thing. You can go back and you can do that later. You just keep doing, repeating these steps until you get the look that you desire. Okay? So now I'm heating this up again and I'm swabbing it to get the excess. It's not too hot. I think I'll hold it. Where's my... Yeah, here we go. I'll hold it with this for a minute. It's not too hot. You don't have to wait too long. It cools down pretty well, pretty quickly. And just, I'll go at it again. And then just scrub into it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just scrub it back until you like it, you know? That's pretty much it. Pretty much all you gotta do. And you might say, yeah, well, what does the back look like after you did that? Am I going to have to do something with the back? I'll come back later, guys, and do a little bit more on that. This is what the back looks like. So I've got a little bit of mess here, and I'll have to get that out. You could patina it again. You could run it up under the torch again. I'll show you the other finished one that I have, what it looks like. Just, you know, you just keep repeating the steps until you get the, the effect that makes you happy. You know, this is what the back is on this now. I will probably use a little bit more steel wool on there, but I kind of like it dark and earthy and a little bit rough looking, you know, this type of look, so I don't have a problem with that, but I can fix that up. Now, one last thing to tell you about this. Before you go ahead and make it into a necklace, and you may want to bend it kind of back into shape because there's a little bit of an arc to it, and your beading on it flattens it. What you're going to want to do, you're going to want to seal this. Now, some people like to seal torch patina with Ren Wax, and... A number of years ago, if you look at my older videos, you'll see that I told you to do that too. Uh, I wouldn't tell you to do that anymore because Ren Wax, it's a, re it's a really good look, but it's a little bit transient. And over the years, you may have to apply it again. Who wants to do that to a piece of jewelry? I don't. So just hit it with a light misting coat of Krylon matte, like we always do on both sides, as soon as you get the look the way you want it to be. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. If you have a micro torch, go try it out. You're going to love it. And um, what I'm going to tell you, too, is, you know, on Sunday, we have our hangout video. And that's where we visit a lot. And there's a lot of chit-chat and some noise and hobbies, rubber chicken and yep. all that <laughs> stuff is there. So what we're going to do this, this weekend, which is, I can't remember the date, but it's this Sunday. Is it 26th? Well, it's today's today's Friday. Friday. This will be the 23rd. Sorry. So it'll be... Um, June, June 23rd, 2019, that's the year, that's the day that, that it'll be, and it's at 4.30 p.m. EST, Eastern Standard Time. Meet with us there, we're on for about an hour, and I'm going to experiment with some ideas to finish these up and make them into something even more fun that you'll enjoy wearing. So, I'm out of here for today, I hope you enjoyed it, go try some torching, and see what you can come up with. Bye! Bye.